All right, my fellow BYU fans. I uh, am looking at some Weber State tape to try to learn what I can about this defense that Jay Hill's going to be running for us. Um, so basically, I'm watching some tape from Weber State versus Utah State from last year and trying to learn what I can. Mostly I'm looking at personnel packages, what sort of people are on the field, formations. I'm not pretending to be an expert on defensive football or really football in general, but I'll just kind of uh, talk through this as I see it, and hopefully we can learn something together here. Uh, the first thing that I notice is that Weber State, in this game at least, these we see a four down front right here, but when I look at their roster, it's very interesting because these three guys with their hands in the dirt are all listed as defensive tackles, not as defensive end, defensive end with two tackles on the inside. This guy over here playing kind of a stand-up defensive end outside linebacker, this guy is listed as a linebacker, not as a defensive end. So there's not a single player on the field right now listed as a defensive end. This is all defensive tackles, linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. I think this is a safety coming up here. Eddie Heckard is over here, and I believe Camden, Camden Garrett is down here. Um, they actually might be lined up in a nickel right now, because I think this guy, number three, uh, is the nickel back for Weber State. So I think that's that's probably the first thing that we can learn here from a Jay Hill defense, at least from this game. If there are three wide receivers on the offense, BYU, or, uh, BYU this year, there's a very good chance they're going to match it with a nickel front or with a nickel defense. And we will have just have to wait and see if BYU chooses to do three down linemen with three linebackers in a nickel look. Or if, uh, or if it'll be four down linemen, four listed linemen. Uh, yeah, we'll just kind of have to see that. So let's watch this play and see what we see. First thing I notice here is uh, I believe this is man coverage because you see this wide receiver for Utah State coming in motion. And you see number three here following him across the formation. That's an indicator of man-to-man -man coverage. And you see a nice run by Utah State here. I'm not going to go back and dissect what went wrong and what, what went right here. I'm mostly, like I said, kind of just going through this quick, looking at personnel packages, looking at tendencies. Looks like uh, we got the same group on the field, but now you see we've got five guys across here. This looks like what you might have seen from a Bronco Mendenhall defense. You've got 54, he's listed as a linebacker, up on the line of scrimmage. 15 over here, he's a linebacker, up on the line of scrimmage with these three defensive tackle listed players. you got one linebacker behind him. I believe this guy's listed as a safety. Nickel. Um, and then outside corners. I believe there's a deep safety back here. So it looks like, to me, Weber State ran a lot of man coverage underneath with a single safety high. There's Camden Garrett. Pretty, uh, pretty tight coverage there from Camden Garrett. Utah State guy says he's being grabbed. Skip ahead here a little bit. Now you see 54 is kind of dropped back to more of an off-ball off uh, linebacker position. 15 still up on the ball. But remember, this guy's listed as a linebacker, not as a defensive end. And 
And here it looks like 15 has dropped back off the ball here. So you've got 3, 3, number 9. I believe this is probably your strong safety. He's looks like he's guarding the tight end primarily. Be interesting to see if BYU does the same thing. Number 9 here looks like a pretty long athlete. And so it makes sense that they're having him guard the tight end. Uh, in BYU's defense, Micah Harper is probably going to be the strong safety. And so uh, I don't necessarily know that they'll want him guarding tight ends like Weber State's using this guy here for. But you know what? BYU played Micah Harper and had him man up against Michael Mayer from Notre Dame last year. And he covered him close, but he was just too too small to stop him, and Mayer was a great player. You got Eddie Heckard in coverage there. Not a not a great throw, but Heckard was in pretty pretty decent position there. It looks like. Here you see 54, the linebacker, has come out to, uh, looks like maybe to jam a receiver or something like that. Or maybe to cover that tight end. I believe that's a tight end, yeah. So sometimes we'll have a linebacker who will split out to cover a tight end. Assuming that BYU runs the same stuff we're seeing run here with Weber State. That's Waylon Lapawahu who just had a false start there. We're seeing all sorts of BYU transfers on the field in this game. This guy, number 54, I'll be very interested to see who on BYU's team is this guy, number 54. Looks like he's versatile. They kind of move him all over the field. He splits out to cover a tight end. He can come up on the line of scrimmage. Um, I'm very interested to see who on BYU's team plays this sort of role. I think BYU has a few different guys that could all that could all play that versatile move around linebacker role. I also wonder who on BYU's defense is. Uh, number 15, the, the linebacker for Weber State, number 15, who lines up on the line of scrimmage a lot. I wonder who from BYU's team that's going to be. I could see that being a guy like Isaiah Banya, who's a bit smaller. Maybe he plays a kind of a stand-up defensive end linebacker hybrid. Or maybe he's a true defensive end and you see a guy like A.J. Vongpachong playing that sort of position. These are all things that I'm curious about as I as I watch some of this film. 